Hey guys, this is Stefan. How are you? On Saturday, I released Luma Pro 2017. It was several months of work getting the thing put together, experimented with a bunch of different feature options, and decided which features we wanted to keep and which features we didn't, and I'm really happy with what we kept. Um, I also was on a script hunt, and uh, that's the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is, is the process of kind of reducing the number of scripts and script memory. I actually came across something kind of cool here, and the best way to show it to you is just to show it to you. So in either case, the best, uh, uh, so the purpose of this video is, is if you already know Luma Pro and need to know about 2017, this is it. Um, over the next few weeks, um, um, Samantha and I are going to go off and and take care of some other videos and get all the videos updated but uh, at least wanted to get a quick demo video out to you guys so here we go all right best thing and the easiest way to show it to you is just to show it to you if you notice i've got a list of poses here in this test hud pose 955 i couldn't do that before you could get about two or three hundred poses into a hud before and now you can get quite a bit more than that um, it seems to be unlimited with within one restriction. So um, I don't know. I don't know if I would advise going much past a thousand. But hey, if you do, give it a try. Let me know what happens. Um, so obviously, you can load your own poses into Luma Pro, just like you load poses into anything else. Just res it on the ground and drag your drag your poses in, and you're set. Um, and by the way, the only restriction has to do with, and I'll press the option button here, is this thing called Make Catalog. Um, and there seems to be about a limit of about 500 to 600 poses if you start making catalogs. Um, I actually didn't run into this until the release, and one person pointed this out to me. So, by the way, if anybody else runs into a problem with this script error, and the script error is kind of catastrophic, it's called a stack heap error. And when you do, you got to reset the script, and the script that runs the pose manager all dies, and it's kind of not pretty to look at and watch. Uh, you just have to reset the reset the filters or reset the scripts, and it'll come back. But in the end result is. is um, I've got a, a revised version of that one little script if it's bugging anyone, so just let me know. Okay, so um, now that you have a thousand scripts in your HUD, it certainly becomes kind of a pain in the butt to try to search through it all. It's certainly not going to be, you know, awesome to click the uh, pose button and have to go next, next, next. Oh my gosh, at, uh, at what, what do I get? Uh, nine per page. That's, uh, that's going to be pretty painful to find things. So what I've done is I've created this thing called a pose filter. So let me give an example. Um, so if your poses are mod, you can change the file name. You can put some, some more clever keywords in it. A lot of times a pose has some stuff in it that you're looking for. So let's say I'm looking for poses that have the word sit in it because I want to find a sit animation. Um, it actually sifted through all of 900 and zillion uh poses in the hud and uh, notice it says the pose filter now equals sit in here and um and what you have here is a list of all the poses that have the word sit in it notice that it's not the list it's still keeping the same pose numbers but uh you end up with this kind of sparse list of uh poses notice yeah i went from pose 600 or just 400 and something to 600 and something in there okay so what happens if you want all the poses to go away a couple quick ways to do it one is in the option menu you can just say clear the filter and it goes back to all the poses again uh notice the pose filter went away or you can come up here and just in your in the pose oops in the pose filter up here you can come in and just say i want to i want to see all the poses again and it'll bring back all your poses. So there is uh, the posing thing. Okay. okay, for the next part of the video, I'm going to use my t personal 2017 Luma Pro HUD. And let me put it on here. Why is it my personal one? Well, it's because I have a bunch of animations that I've purchased personally. Um, I can't hand them out to anyone else, but I can load them into my personal HUD, which is why the thing ends up being no transfer. And a couple of these um, poses are no mod, which forced my whole HUD to no mod. A little frustrating. By the way, when you talk to pose vendors, ask them to make them mod. It's not like you can change the pose in them anyway, but at least it allows you to change the name, which is kind of cool for the ad thing. All right, so when I, wear, when I add the HUD right now, um, if you notice, it pops up a little box here, and this is a method for us to now communicate to you guys if there's any, you know, important data that we'd like to push to you. So if we're running a contest, or let's say, worst case, there's a bug in the HUD, or something like that, we have some way of communicating to you or announcing the next party. Um, all you got to do is press thanks. You won't see the message ever again. And um, so be it. If you want to see it again, just hit ignore, and you can go see it. Okay, so the thing I wanted to talk to you guys now about is this 
is the big feature that we've spent our time talking about, which is shown up here, which is around being able to adjust the balls. So for me, I'm going to show you what the 2016 balls did. So I'm going to zoom in on me for a second. I'm wearing last year's balls. And the way that you move the balls was touching it. So wherever I touch the balls, let me get them out of posing here for a second. Let me put them, put them into a fixed pose here. So anywhere you touch the ball, it would move it too. So if I wanted to move the ball up, I actually had to cam up and then so I could touch it above. If I wanted the balls to go down, I had to cam to go down. If I wanted to move it backwards, I had to cam behind and touch in. So you kind of get the point. The problem was is you had to lose your camera angle every time you did it. What you'd really like is to be able to set your camera angle and go for it. So what I ended up doing was is I ended up changing the whole 2017 ball scheme. By the way, if you wear the 2016 balls, it does the old way. If you wear the 2017 balls, you get the new way. And so you just got to remember sometimes if you save outfits or whatnot to just, you know, upgrade to the 2017 balls. I actually have the 2017 balls on Sammy, and I actually made one of them a box just for education purposes here. So I'm going to throw Sammy into, so I'm going to say model Samantha, get ready to accept an animation request, Sammy. And I've got this pose called adjust that I keep this is sitting around here. Thank you, Sammy. And... Um, normally the balls are round, and I'll talk about why they are in a second, but I made one of them a box just for this video, and then I also lit up the chin. This is where the lights attach to. They attach to your chin, and then um, the balls can move up and down. Let me step out of the way here for this video here. And the way that you work the balls is, is any ball that you touch, let's say I touch this red ball, click. And let's and now I've got this new joystick up here. If I press up, it goes up. And when you press down, it goes down. And then you can press left. And then you can press right. You can make it go closer. And then you can make it go out. And the reason why I made this a box was just to make sure you understand that the pivot point is, is around the chin. Now you guys have seen this before on the on the on the projector here. So, for example, the projector goes up, the projector goes down, the projector goes left, the projector goes right, like it has before in all of these years, out and in. And it also pivoted on the chin point as well. So I just wanted to make sure you guys understood this. I know some people that were asking, how does, this, how does up, down, left, right work? So if this is kind of cool. So if you want to edit a ball, you click a ball. It's like the green one here. Now, a couple things happen. Notice when just by clicking the green ball, it moved everything here, and it actually selected the green ball over here. And I can start swinging this ball around the pivot point here. Um, I can also bring it down, bring it in. If I want to move the blue ball, just click the blue ball. Notice it went to blue ball, went to Samantha. And I can move it around. I can click the red ball and and also, well, except for it's a box right now, and do the same thing. So if you ever get confused, you can always just hit reset back to where you were. Actually, I hadn't had the lights turned on. And uh, you can hit Rembrandt or Butterfly. This is These are kind of like the quick presets. So if anything ever gets a little confusing, you can always just reset back to uh, what you were. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to set your camera angle. And then you can just move these things around here. By the way, I had white selected. It actually moved all three. It's not something I don't think you'll do often, but it has the ability to do so. And the other thing you can do is just you can hit the, let me, for example, I'm going to take select all the balls, take the intensity down. I'll click on the red ball, turn this intensity. Now, I can actually hide this thing here. Let me turn the intensity all the way up on the one ball. And you can see as I move the ball around, notice her face is lighting up. So I can actually do all this even with the balls hidden. And that's the point, since I can't click the ball, i got to click down here on the green thing. And then I can move this green ball around. Except for his intensity, that green ball intensity is down. This is typically the accent light, and you can bring that around. So the nice thing is, is now I can fully adjust the position of everything at a fixed camera position without having to change anything. And like I said, you just click the ball, go, okay, I want to move the red ball. Move, 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 move do all this. Notice I didn't move anything with the camera angle. And that's it. Okay, last thing I'm going to show you is just a real quick thing on how you can do um, 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 the save and restore, and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is, is you probably have a bunch of personal animations loaded into last year's 2016 HUD, and you'd like to get it over into the 2017. I'm going to walk you how to through the, to do that. And also, this is kind of a slick way to do it, just, just to back up stuff in general, um, in case your HUD deletes or you you know your inventory loses its mind or something like that. You don't lose a bunch of hard work in here. So um, I'm going to start from the 2017 HUD, and I'm going to do something called resing a backup server. And by the way, you can actually wear this thing. You can carry it around with you. I just had to res it in World. It's just a little bit easier. So what I'm going to do now is now that I've got the backup server ready to go, I'm going to go load in my 2016 personal. Uh, here's my 2016 personal HUD. It had a bunch of animations that I spent a lot of time shopping for and figuring out and everything else. So all you do is just click up on the backup server and just say backup. And notice it's doing two things. It's not only backing up the poses, which it's doing right now. It's transferring all the poses. There are about 200 and some poses in the uh, out of the fireplace. You can see this a little bit better. There were um, there were some presets that I had saved from the um, from the uh, scene engine, and so um, those are also saved in your backup. So you have some nice backups that. Uh, um, you can save now that these backups you can after this backup is finished you can actually pull this into your inventory and then all your poses are all backed up in one place life is good let this thing finish transferring here and I now have 221 animations in this thing okay so now now that I've backed up my 2016 by the way you can take a copy Put this in your inventory. Now you've got a backup of your servers. Plus, this one still stays out in world for for this sort of work. Now for putting it in the 2017 HUD. So I'm going to go to my 2017, if I could type HUD here, and I'm just going to make one and make a copy of it. And I'm going to name this thing Personal. This is my convention here. And I'm going to res this thing on the ground. Now, I'm not exactly sure whether you need to res it on the ground or not. I know I need to res it on the ground as the developer. It's some weird little quirk in the scripting language about since I developed all this code. Um, let me know, by the way. Um, I've done it sometimes successfully with my alt, and other times it didn't. I just recommend it with any of the posing systems you res it on the ground. All right, so you just select the backup server and hit restore here. And there's a lot of yellow text floating around here. So it's actually transferring here. And um, the reason for all the glowy stuff is there's a bunch of stuff that's going on here. So it's now actually transferring all of these animations. So it's um, beaming the animation from here over to the HUD. And it sits over there and says the restore is complete. And um, now all I got to do is pick this thing back up. Take. And now I've got my, I'll put it on a personal folder. Oh Lord, I got way too much stuff in here. Add. And now I've got a 2017. I'll hit thanks so I don't see that message anymore. And now when I bring this up, there was a several hundred animations that were by default in there. Plus I had the 220 for my old one. So it gave me about 348 animations in my new HUD and it makes things real easy to transfer the data. Okay, so that's the quick summary of 2017. Uh, thanks for your time, guys. Talk to you later.